Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this is a review of the Anchor Solix C1000 Power Station and Anchor PS200 Portable Solar Panel. We had a three day blackout related to the recent wildfires in Southern California. This caught us off guard and left my channel dark, so as soon as we got power back, I went looking for an easy way to have some emergency power if it happened again. I wound up going with this 1056 watt hour portable unit and the panel so I could charge it independently of the grid. My purpose was to be able to power the computer I use for channel production and to do things like recharge devices and batteries. Bare minimum preparedness. At 1056 watts, this will power 1056 watts of stuff for an hour or any combination of that math you can think of. Some examples, my computer, my monitor, and an LED lamp pull about 80 watts during basic use. I can run that for about 13 hours before needing to recharge. Same thing for a family's worth of phones and other rechargeable batteries. Before I cover more use cases, let's look at the form and features. This unit is the size of a large car battery. According to Anchor, it weighs 28 pounds. The case is made of hard plastic, feels pretty sturdy. I haven't dropped it yet, but it seems like it would survive some minor calamities. It has two sturdy built-in handles. I carry the thing around with one hand. A smaller person should be able to handle it with two no problem. It is truly portable, but you probably don't want to try running a marathon while holding it. It has three different outlet types, car 12 volt slash cigarette lighter, USB, and 120 volt three prong. Peak power draw is 1800 watts, except for the single surge pad three prong outlet which supports 2,400 watts of output. Keep in mind at 1,056 watt hours and 2,400 watt draw, you're going to drain the battery in about 25 minutes. Each of those outlet types has its own switch so you can turn types on and off independently. Also on the front panel, you have a button to connect via Bluetooth because of course there's an app for that. Next to that is a button to toggle the main display and lastly, a built-in LED light bar. The light is bright enough to see around the battery, but it kind of blinds you looking into the display so you can't really see the display while the light is on. Power inputs are 120 volt three prong and a 60 volt 600 watt input that a couple of included accessory cables plug into. On the other side, you have a large plug that allows you to connect a second battery to the unit, doubling your total energy storage. Use is pretty simple. You just charge the thing up, turn on your outlet type and plug something in. The main display tells you what percentage of charge you have left, what your power draw is and approximate time to a dead battery given that draw. The app duplicates the functionality of the front panel, but you can also do other handy things like adjust the current draw on the three prong power input in case you need to avoid tripping circuit breakers or fuses. Let's talk about the solar panel. It is two feet by two feet folded up and includes a sturdy built in handle. I'm six feet tall and it hangs about a foot off the ground while holding it comfortably. Might be a minor challenge for someone short. Anchor says it weighs 16 pounds. I can comfortably carry that and the battery at the same time for a reasonable distance. You probably don't want to bring it with you on a 10 mile hike. The solar panel is held secure by snaps. These are my biggest complaint about the package. They haven't failed yet, but I'm pretty sure that'll be the first thing to break. It unfolds twice into a two foot by seven foot semi rigid unit that has some semi sturdy legs for angle adjustment, but again, with the snaps to hold that in place. They're also kind of difficult to snap and unsnap, so I'm not generally a fan of the choice. Overall construction is fine considering it's meant to be portable. Some sort of medium density plastic with a canvas backing 
It won't survive World War III, but should be fine setting it up in the yard or a campsite over and over until the snaps start breaking. To connect it to the power station, you use this cable and plug it into the two dongles on the panel. It's easy enough to plug in even one-handed. Even easier if you have enough brains to do it before you put it on the ground. The other end goes into the yellow 60 volt plug and you're off to the races. This unit is rated to generate 200 watts on a clear day aimed directly at the sun. I have briefly accomplished this on a winter day. I've mostly, in winter, gotten 185 to 190 watts out of it, so I feel like it, that's solid marketing. It is not terribly difficult to get it properly aimed, but the snaps involved are a pain. If you're setting it up somewhere with some bite, like a lawn, you can actually forego those. The panel surface does get dirty easily, but it's also pretty easy to wipe down. It's only 14 square feet. 200 watts into 1056 watt hours is about 5 hours 15 minutes. My charging has been closer to 6 hours, which is about right for 185 watts. Works out pretty great as long as you have the space to set it up and a clear view of the sun. If not, things drop off pretty dramatically. I've produced around 25 watts on a fairly cloudy day. Not great, but it is enough to charge a couple of USB devices in an emergency. Speaking of uses, you could conceivably run an entire house of LED lights all night. I specifically bought a battery unit because I wanted to be able to use it in the house. You might be able to keep a refrigerator or freezer full of food from going bad if the power is out for half a day. I've been looking at a tiny space heater three to four hours with one of those. What it won't do is big ticket items all day and night or even for more than an hour. For use in a home, you would definitely need to pick and choose what you're going to power. For camping, you're looking at hot water and an electric grill for at least one meal. Things like inflators and camp lanterns. Especially with the panel and a visible sun, you're pretty well taken care of day and night. Another way it will be handy for me personally is road trips. I take a lot of equipment with me for capturing and processing video imagery. This gives me one place I can plug everything into all day and not have to worry about it, as opposed to juggling the two plugs in my car. And because it's portable enough, I can chuck it into the trunk real fast to hide it if I need to. The unit comes with several accessory cords, like one that connects to car 12 volt slash cigarette lighter. It also comes with splitters that allow you to connect as many as three solar panel arrays, up to 600 watts of input, as well as extensions to give you some flexibility in placement of the panel relative to the battery. You're basically set for the connection accessories, which is nice. I paid $700 for the battery and solar panel combined, which looking around then and now is a decent deal. The list prices on these things are outrageous and one brand or the other is constantly going on sale. So definitely wait for a deal if you can. Overall, I'm really happy with the purchase. It actually works. It does what I need it to and it performs as it should. No real surprises here outside of the snaps on the solar panel. I hope you enjoyed this review. Maybe it helped you in deciding if a device like this might be something you can use. I don't plan on doing many more review videos, but there are plenty more dash cam drone and render videos coming on Lucid's too, so stay tuned.